Hey everyone, this is Scott from certmedia.com, and in this video I'm covering Slim SEO. So Slim SEO is basically a extremely lightweight and basic SEO plugin. And when you first install it, and on a fresh WordPress site, you're gonna get flagged that you have full text RSS feeds enabled. It wants you to switch to summary. We're gonna do that just because it told us to. Now, we're gonna go into the settings and we're gonna talk about what, who this plugin is for. It's basically, for the lack of a better representation, it's basically the Genesis SEO functionality, but in a plugin. Uh, Genesis is a theme framework and it's known for being very SEO friendly, has strong markup, and is very well used. I actually use it on certmedia.com and I love the Genesis framework. It's very extendable. Um, this basically takes the concept of it, but basically gives you the most straightforward, basic SEO settings that you couldn't mess up. The sticking point is that it, because it's so basic, it's supposed to be very fast. And there is a point to that. Um, having a fast SEO plugin is a good point of view. Yoast SEO 14, which I didn't cover on the channel, is a really good improvement on their performance by swapping all the data that Yoast uses to give you recommendations and putting it into their own custom meta tables. This plugin's stick is, well, we don't need that because we ha only give you what you really need. So you install this plugin, you have the general tab, which is just pasting your code on the front end, totally fine. You can set your homepage title and meta description, and it basically just includes a check mark if you're in the recommended length. And uh, has a character count, honestly, very great. I love character counts. Mostly because they're super easy to read. You can set your Facebook and Twitter profile image. The tools section just allows you to migrate SEO data from three plugins and the Yoast SEO, all in one SEO, and the SEO framework. We're gonna go ahead and show you what it actually adds to the front end of the page as well. And it really isn't all that much. Hold on, let me go ahead and save uh, my very unusual changes. And here they are. So one thing I'm gonna point out already is it doesn't add them high enough into the header in my opinion. It's adding all this metadata before the closing head tag. That's one thing that could be of concern. Uh, typically it's recommended to have your meta tags and everything as high up on the food chain as they can be. It's the first thing you want the bots to see. And I can, I can understand that reasoning. I do wish that this was higher up, but we're just gonna ignore that and look at what it offers. So Twitter card, it sets the summary large image. That's fine, that's recommended. Uh, open graph site name, it includes that. Locale, fine, URL, perfect. Description, type, open graph title. And we're gonna go ahead and add the images as well to the homepage, not because they matter, but just because I wanna see if it adds the markup correctly. I know I use two different random images, but I really wanna see how the markup gets added. And yes, it adds the correct image, and it uh, correctly adds not only the image here, but the image height and width. Perfect. Great open graph implementation, and it's very basic. Um, one thing I will note is that it's not adding the robots tags, which Yoast SEO now does. If you guys have visited a website on Yoast SEO 14, you'll notice that there's quite a few more headers now focused on Bingbot, Googlebot independently, and a lot of new tags in there. This doesn't seem to have it. Um, I honestly think that they probably will add it. The dev looks like he's quite responsive and this is a fairly recently updated version. So I have no hesitation that he will support it. We will go ahead now and go to the post and we're just gonna see what I can modify on the individual posts because that's what really matters. So you come over to the search engine optimization tab and you can basically do everything you did on the homepage. You can hide it from the search results. So setting it to no index. It includes a Twitter image, the Facebook image, meta description, and meta title, and it will automatically generate one from your content if you don't have one. So it basically takes that configuration step in Yoast SEO where you automatically generate it from the excerpt, and it just does it for you. That's fine. I actually advise that being done in Yoast SEO, and it will spit it out saying, hey, this is what you have, and it puts it in a faded text so that way you understand you didn't write this, but this is what we're generating for you. One thing I will say is that it doesn't offer much in the realm of content recommendations. Now, some users tend to use external sources for getting the recommendations. Um, there are some SEO, it's basically like having Yoast SEO or 
rank math SEO in a website or in an app and it will analyze their text and give them their own set of suggestions. There are programs like that out there. I'm assuming that's kind of the market here because it doesn't really recommend any way for you to optimize it. And there are some things that you should be doing, including an image, uh, making sure you're linking to another post. That is the one thing everybody forgets about. It's okay, I'm guilty of it too. And it's very important. And this doesn't offer any suggestions. It doesn't offer like a readability analysis too, which is just a bonus feature. And I do wish that it added some sort of recommendation engine, but the point of this is it's supposed to be bare bones and it does that very well. Um, it's basically like I keep saying, the Genesis SEO settings in a plugin. Um, very fine, we're gonna go to the sitemap.xml, see what we have. So we get a very simple and basic XML file, which is fine. It looks like it automatically excludes the tags, maybe? Let's see, we come over here, includes the URL and the last modified date. That's all it should do. I wish it included the image or gave some indication that it included the image, but this is fine. It works, this will get you into Google. Um, it doesn't look like it excludes some of the common WooCommerce pages like the cart page, for instance, Pot a category, it's totally fine, loading all the categories. One thing that is a little um, difficult with this plugin, at least in my opinion, is removing content from index, so from the sitemap. So the general consensus is if something's marked as no index, it should not be in your sitemap. I agree with that and most people would. But things like tags are something that a lot of people abuse because they don't know how to use them correctly. A lot of people use tags as a means of slapping SEO keywords in there, but there's not a very easy way to just say, I don't want to no index, I want to no index all my tags. And that functionality doesn't exist. And it looks like, at least from the way that sitemap is generated at the moment, that there is no way to just index them if you do have them correct. This could be an XML sitemap generation issue. It just hasn't updated. Um, let's see if we can flush it real quick. So I can't tell if it's just stuck in a transient or if it's just not adding the content that I had added. But if it does automatically no index or tells the tags, hey, that you aren't included in the sitemap file, that could be a point of issue for your website if you are actually using tags the way that they're supposed to be. But we can uh, check right here and see. Right here, the, tag, uh, the tags are set to no index follow. And I'm willing to bet now if I go to the WooCommerce tags, they're gonna be set to no index follow as well. And that is a that is a problem. Because it's, at least with products especially, no index follow. These should be indexable, in my opinion. Even if there's nothing in it, they should still be indexable. Because there is value to the user. Let's just go ahead and copy this so I can put it in there as the tag. even if there's no content in there because there is a use to having tags, there it goes, that are not currently filled to be indexed. You could get it as a thin content error, but I feel like there's just a little too little flexibility, at least with taxonomies. No indexing content that has no content in it is typically good advice, but when the content is set to no index and you add something to it, so let's say um, you have a store and you set up a tag page. And for that tag page, you're going to start listing off products. You're selling cups. Okay, so now you have coffee cups. Let's just say you have that as a tag instead of a category for some reason. So you have your coffee cups tags set up and you write the description and you add your image and you do everything that you're supposed to do, but you haven't added your products yet. If Google crawls the page and it says, okay, this is no index, Googlebot, when a page is set to no index, tends to keep it that way. And there are some posts um, where John Mueller has basically said, if the content was set to no index, 
it could not, it may very well not be indexable for an indeferred period of time. And there's not really, you're not going to get penalized for having an empty tag empty unless you're doing it excessively. So if you spin up thousands upon thousands upon thousands of tags for your store or whatever, and they're all set to no index because there's no content in them yet, that's going to cause you issues. Because then what you're doing is you're creating thin and useless content. It's the same concept of your attachment pages. Uh, if you go to your post and you don't want your images to have their own empty page, so you redirect them to the image. And that's exactly what this plugin does too. Great job on the divs in that part. So I disagree with the mentality of them automatically being set to no index because I don't think a lot of users are creating tag pages with zero content in them. But I do think that if the content is set to no index and Googlebot tries to recrawl that or just it's like, okay, this is no index, it could inhibit the page from being indexed as quickly as you'd like. I, I'm not really sure of the logic of it not being of it being set to no index right away. I would not include in the sitemap by default, but it is a limitation I think is kind of odd. However, this plugin is great. Um, if you're looking for just bare bones SEO and to set your open graph images, this does the job. It's easier than the SEO framework. However, it doesn't add any JSON markup from at least anywhere that I could tell, or at least anything that's useful. It looks like there was some breadcrumbs down here, but that very well could. Why are, why do they put these things in the weirdest spot? There's no organization markup, it looks like, though. At least not without the image. Some very odd inclusions. But it's a fine plugin. Would I recommend it, though, for the average user? No. And the reason I wouldn't recommend it for the average user is just because it's simple it doesn't mean it's good. And I feel like when you get into the rabbit hole of optimizing your website, you get to the idea that just because something is simple, it's inherently better for your website and your performance. And I just don't think that's true. The average user does need guidance, and this does not provide guidance. This provides the simplest way to add a title and meta tag to your front end of any plugin. That's quite frankly what it does. But I couldn't recommend this on the basis of it's so simple that it would be a detriment to the average user. Great plugin though, um, and the dev is really great at keeping up to date with and fixing issues. Um, I'll include a link though. It's definitely worth a shot if you're not using any SEO plugin and you just want something that's basic and you really dislike the clutter and the ads that you get in Rank Math, All-in-One, Yoast SEO. All of those have obnoxious advertising and obnoxious features, and this could be a safe haven for you if you just want the most basic feature set that you can have. But if you're thinking of switching from Yoast SEO and you've used it for your website and you're just trying to get more performance, this is not where I would look to start. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments below. Great plugin. Uh, definitely worth a shot if you're a very well-educated user, but I wouldn't recommend this for a beginner. Make sure to like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.